Well, hi, everybody. It's Steve Helpy Napier. Welcome to the Practitioner Summit call. Um, so as with uh, most Practitioner Summit calls that uh, you'll be on, um, I want to start off by seeing what questions you guys have about applying the change grid, using the change grid uh, for yourself, for others, as the case may be. And so um, that happened. And so I always have a topic ready to go. I was going to talk about how you guys can really optimize, maximize, if you will, your use of your personal online change grid. Uh, and we'll take a look at a little bit later. But Edie just asks us a very interesting question. And that is, how does the path of self-discovery and the Master Stream Strategic Framework uh, kind of work together. So uh, let me kind of go through that a little bit. So, so this, the way that we walk the path of self-discovery, when we are using this for our own personal growth and development, or when we're working with a client to help them identify and solve problems all by themselves, we're just kind of facilitating that, leading that coaching, that sort of process, we're going to follow the path of self-discovery as you see it on this form. I could use that exact same situation to say, this is a situation where we'd really want to walk the path. And so uh, the current situation is, yes, the computer, Linda's computer is fried. <laughs> so we don't need to describe anything else about that. Uh, but I do like the idea about removing all teacups from <laughs> wherever the desk is. Can you imagine how many times across the country every day somebody splashes something on their computer keyboard? Uh -huh. I mean, this has got to be a common thing. So what's our goal? Our goal is to get Linda... Um, a working computer as soon as possible. Um, our goal is to make sure that um, in the event that they want to keep her computer or it needs to be scrapped, that they have a way to securely wipe uh, the information off of it or physically give us the hard drive. Uh, whatever whatever it may be. So we could talk a lot about the desired situation. Well, the obstacles are just a matter of time. And um, mm -hmm. you know, energy being direct there. Actually, the the most challenging thing was getting the appointment at the Apple Store. So um, yeah, um, our nearest Apple Store didn't have an appointment for a week. So and then so we got the solution in place. How am I feeling about it? That this was a very odd way to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> now. So Edie, what I've just done there is I've shown you how as an individual or as someone working with someone, we would just walk this path of self-discovery as I did. So what is the current situation? What's the desired situation, obstacle, solution, feeling? So now the question becomes, how does this fit in to the, um, to the change grid itself? And so, or rather, to master stream when we're selling. So now, a lot of you that are practitioners um, are only fluent in those things that are change works related. So you know everything there is to know about this little diagram over here on the left side of the master stream strategic framework. Did the image change? You're looking at the master stream. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, if you're only in the world of change works, then you know this. You might not even know this part exists. So uh, Master Stream is basically the application of change works, all things tension management to influencing other people. And so this long curving line is what we refer to as the master stream. And it shows the ideal flow of tension that should occur during each of the different phases of an influence process, sales process, whatever uh, label you want to put around it. And so um, so what ends up happening is that there are certain things that naturally occur at each one of these phases. So phase one is the connecting phase. It's all about those moments uh, before you get down to business where there's a social interaction. So if you're meeting someone for the first time, this is where the social pleasantries are. Uh, that kind of like sizing one another up to find out uh, or, or to at least feel like there's enough trust or whatever to have whatever the conversation is. That phase one, it tends to be all about, and I could go back to the other diagram, is it all about uh, current situation, desired situation, obstacles, solutions, feelings. 
I mean, directly, it's not any of these things, but for the most part, it's it's factual information. And the white step is really all about describing the current situation in concrete factual terms. And so when I ask you who you are and how you are, and what brings you to, uh, to wanting to talk with me today, um, this is all a lot of very factual stuff, background sort of stuff, et cetera. So it's primarily that the, the white, that information. Now, when we get in to phase two, you'll notice the master stream curve. We 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 uh, we, we go all the way down to the to the white step to the uh, current situation, and then we can get down to to business, the subject. And so they've told me what they want to talk about, why they want to uh, be there, or whatever. And now I need to get great clarity around what is it that they want. What are you trying to accomplish in having this conversation, period? And so that's all this kind of desired situation um, conversation, which is the green sort of step. And we know that we can do this very simply by saying, what do you want? Or we could actually go deep into it and say, what do you hope to gain? What do you hope to lose? What do you not want to gain? What do you not want to lose as a result of whatever this conversation happens to be? Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that as we get someone to talk about their desired situation and we're trying to influence them, they should have their level of tension go up. Their, uh, that level of tension is either going to go up because they feel as though um, they're on track for getting their goal, in which case they're going to get more excited, so tension should go up, but they could also have the tension go up because they realize how far away they are from the outcome they really seek, in which case tension mm -hmm. on up as well. But it is this act of questioning specifically about what do you want, what do you want, what is the desired situation, uh, that's what is going to raise the level of tension. Now, we end the, this, uh, this phase two by asking them a very simple question, and that is, why aren't you already there? So what, what is the real uh, roadblocks? What stopped you from doing this? And so there is a little bit of the obstacle step that also happens during, um, during uh, the uh, phase two, but it happens at the end. We wanna get them really, really interested in the desired outcome, or we want them to see the benefits of what we're uh, trying to do. Remember the path is the path of self-discovery. We're trying to, instead, instead of telling them what their goals are and why those goals are important, we're trying to ask them questions so that they realize for themselves what their goals are, why those are important. And at the tail end of things, we also want them to realize that they aren't there yet. And the reason why they aren't there yet is because there is some, and you guys have heard me say this many, many times, there is some obstacle or set of obstacles, real or imagined, that are in your way. What's stopping you from getting this goal? Why are you not already there? And as they start to talk about what those about what those boundaries are, what those um, uh, you know missing resources might be, what the failures that they've had in the past trying to deal with it, whatever it is, whatever those obstacles are, real or perceived, that's going to take their level of tension up to a natural threshold. Now, it's a natural threshold because you'll know when you're at the threshold when a person says to you, is this something you can help me with, right? Mm. And so whether I'm selling an object or a service, if they realize they've got this very compelling goal and that that goal is currently unattainable, it would not be out of, out of the you know, normal way of communicating for the person to say, is that what you help people with? Can you do that? Can you help me? You know, what are we gonna do? You know, they're gonna communicate something that basically says, it's time to stop talking about what I want and why I can't have it, and now start talking about how are we going to get it? What can you do to help me? Now, if you were in a sales situation and you were uh, looking to turn a prospect into a new client for your training services or your coaching services, this may be very well be the moment where you'll say, well, that's what I help my client solve. These problems are what I help my client eliminate. These goals are what I like to help my client reach. Would you like to become a client? <laughs> And so, you know, you might want to use this as a moment to at least get a commitment in principle. This person sees that they have a real issue and, uh, and they're reaching out for some solution. 
Okay, are you guys with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. So we've gone yep. white, green, black. White. Oh, I love that line. How how do you do that? Hire me and I'll tell you. You know, that's, this is exactly right. That's what I help my clients do. Would you like to become a client? Uh, so, yeah. All right. Now, so we've gone white, green, and black. Notice that we have skipped over the blue and the yellow. Now, blue, again, is the color of, associated with control. You're the blue in this whole situation. Uh, if a client comes to you and they're blue and they stay blue, they're totally in control. There's might be a lovely conversation, could be a, a good new friend, but uh, there's no work to be done um, if someone is steadily in blue across power, right? Um, even if they're going between power and doing things, which is yellow is the solutions and the implementations of your plans, et cetera, uh, that could very easily uh, be something that, um, um, uh, yeah, would do that. Um, let's see. Okay, Nisty did the silence align. There we go. Okay, so now, um, now that they are feeling out of control, they're up in red. And Edie, I know this is a very long answer to your question, so hopefully I'm giving you what you wanted. Um, we then have to get into what is the solution? Well, the solution that we offer, the recommendation we have to make, whatever it is, this is phase three, the solving phase. And so during the solving phase, what we're going to do is provide information about solutions. Now, in our particular case, we're going to be uh, basically patching, packaging that solution in a way that will address those problems so that the goal can be reached. So, you know, we're going to do a good job of telling them this is how you go about solving that. Uh, to Shag's point earlier, the number one thing you're going to do is engage my services, you know, or whatever. By the way, it's the same thing, though, if you're talking to a friend. So they're not going to hire you, but are they going to at least honor the advice you're giving them? Are they at least going to give you some sort of, a, you know, a, a, a reasonable opportunity to be of help to them? So that's what it's all about. We want to test for that before we invest in the next uh, sections of the master stream process. Edie, you've unmuted. Are we on track so far? It's great. And, and when you're done, I'll, I'll tell you why I brought it up because it was okay. just crazy, but this is great. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah. And so um, now we start to present the solution. Now, as you can see, the level of productive tension drops during phase three. So let's as a review or new information for those who aren't master stream trained. Um, so what happens to your level of productive tension? The moment you realize that a solution to your problem is readily available, tension goes, goes down. down. Tension's down. Going to go down. It's going to go down. Unfortunately, as it goes down, it's going to leave power stress where there is that sense of urgency. There is that drive to get things done and get them done now. And now they're going to be moved down into power. Power is more about gathering information, weighing out the relative benefits of each of those uh, options, you know, whatever it is. They're shopping. People in, in power don't buy things generally or they don't change all that much because they're continuing to learn and grow and figure things out. Now, those of you that are change works fluent know that under a certain set of very ideal circumstances, people can and do accomplish things while they're in power. But generally speaking, we know the population of our planet um, aren't thinking as clearly as they really need to be thinking. Critical thinking is falling by the wayside rather rapidly. So um, mm -hmm. anywho, my point is, is that as we start to give that solution, mm -hmm. the level of tension is going to go down. Now we have to remind them if we want to stop this decay in tension and we want them to actually do that which is necessary for them to follow through and accomplish something, we have to recognize when the presentation is over. Our solution was very succinct, it was very direct. Um, and then we want to remind them that these obstacles continue to exist. How long will these obstacles continue to exist? Until you hire me to help you work your until way around. You, until we get started. And so, or you got again, if you're talking to a friend, until they follow through and do the work that is necessary to do. And that's where we need to get a commitment in fact. 
So a commitment in principle is just an agreement that happens conversationally. A commitment is, in fact, is when someone actually declares their intention. Yes, I'm going to take your advice. Yes, I'm going to work with you. Yes, I'm going to whatever it is. We need to make sure that that, that, that commitment is there. Otherwise, it's been a lovely chat, but it's not going to do anything of any real value for, for anybody. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to say, all right, we got their commitment. So let's recap for them what they've just accomplished. So um, and again, red is about feelings, hunches, and intuition. You'll see we don't get up there. We touch upon it, but we don't dwell in that whole um, emotional uh, part of that. Remember that red is about predictions. It's about feelings, hunches, intuitions, gut level instincts, that sort of thing. So we don't need them to dwell up there, but we want them to touch upon it because commitment is something that ha very much happens um, at the heart and brain level. Brian could explain the physiology, but we need them to somehow or another make that biochemical connection in their brain to uh, actually doing what needs to be done. And then we want to protect that relationship. We want to protect that commitment. So let's uh, lower the level of tension that they're experiencing elsewhere in life so they can leave ready to, to tackle that, uh, that, that you know, course of action that gave them, um, et cetera. Okay, so that's a whirlwind through the strategic framework. So Edie, I'll throw it to you. The, oh yeah, go ahead, what, Dave. Yeah, can, this can, is can so interesting because there's a group of consultants, coaches, and I'm kind of part of it. I may drop out. But anyway, they pitched to this person yesterday for a half hour. And it, it was somebody that has uh, shingles. And he's in Canada selling them. And, and at the end of the half hour, Leo says, um, uh, you know, for 2500 I will do... Uh, something like a marketing analysis or something. And the guy said, no. And uh -huh. and it was over and it was over, but I don't think they followed, no. you know, these steps. And today in the conversation, he said, well, we're a bunch of consultants right. and coaches. So we really don't need selling strategies. And I'm thinking if you have <laughs> any product or so, I, you know what I mean? If I want to get out of a speeding ticket, I, mean, look, I look, am selling. Let me, just, let me just interrupt for you Edie, for just a second. I want everyone to think about every single person who's on this call. We are all in this industry. How many people have we each watched start a practice but like we have and end up falling by the wayside? Yes. They don't realize the thing that has made us successful as individuals is not uh, uh, well, not limited to, and I don't think not primarily our clinical skills or our training skills, our coaching skills, our consulting skills. We're where we are because we found clients. Right. Right. Yep. And so for Absolutely. Me, first and foremost, this is a sales job. And yes, uh, we also have to deliver on the product, but there ain't no product to deliver if we haven't sold something. So T, if, if you could talk about the commitment phase, you you, you kind of left out the the, the green, uh, uh, black, yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if we. And I think that might clarify things. Yeah, yeah, because um, I was looking for another slide that shows the exact um, colors for each of the different phases. And David is correct. We did. We need to do a closing summary. So again, if it's a sales situation, then the burden is on us as the sales uh, per professionals to um, give them the solution they're looking for and then say, there's gonna be a little transition question. We would say, does this, does this feel like this would work? Does this make sense to you? And we kind of do that because if there's gonna be any objections, we wanna flesh them out uh, before attention gets high. So, but let's say they go like that. So well, then let's review your situation. These were your goals. That's a review of the, the desired situation. And these are why those goals were so important to you. Still, that's the, the, uh, the, the desired situation with a little bit of emotional stuff thrown in. And these were what we identified as what's holding you back, what's in your way, what's stopping you. And we, we um, uh, relist each and every one of those obstacles because those obstacles Face it, your product, your service, whatever it is you're offering is all about slaying dragons. 
It's all about getting the obstacles out of the way. If they didn't have any obstacles, they don't need you. They can get to their goals all by themselves. The reason why they need someone in human development industry is because they um, have obstacles that they either aren't aware of, or if they were aware of them, they can't do anything about. They need us. Those obstacles are what our focus really needs to be. And then we're going to end with just a little bit of a solutions question. So with our solution in place, with this recommendation in place, what do you think the chances are that you'll be able to get rid of those goals? You'll be able to reach or get rid of those obstacles, reach those goals uh, and, uh, you know, get back to wherever you're trying to go, blah, blah. Um, and they're going to say, sounds great to me. Great. The time to get started is when? So that, that's a test. Yeah, those of you that are certified in mastery, you know, the time to get started is now. And then we're going to uh, tell them how they engage our services or how they buy the product. Uh, or even again, if you're just talking to a friend, the time for you to get started is now. And so what you're going to need to do is this, this, and this, or what are you going to do, depending on the nature of the relationship, you might be doing more talking here, they might be doing the talking here, but this is all about them leaving with an ease with the plan, just to know that there's a problem, they're still leaving with tension down. So we got to be back checking in on them frequently to keep this tension up, keep this tension up. Because again, the awareness that a solution to your problem exists lowers tension. They may have committed to it verbally, but until they do something definitive, this is still a highly susceptible situation because they're going to go back to reviewing it and they're going to go like, yeah, there is a solution. I don't need to do it right now. Oh, there is a solution. I can wait a week or two. Or there is a solution. Maybe I can take some time and find other options too. Do you guys want those conversations to happen? No. Nope. And so we need to do whatever we can do to not only make sure they continue to be comfortable with us and confident in the solution that we've recommended, but we need to continue to maintain their productive tension until follow -up I like, occurs. I like, I like how in the commitment phase, we get them to commit to the solution by asking them the questions, you know, how is this a good solution? Why is this going to work for you? How is this going to work for you? Right. Mm -hmm. Why is this the best solution? You know, yeah. those kinds of questions to get them committed to the solution. You're absolutely I like right. that as well, because you, you're not passive in that perspective, right? And so then they can't come right. back and blame, you know, the product or blame uh, the salesperson who right. sold it to them. And oftentimes that's what happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then they'll go on to search for another product, the next product, the next product, next product. Absolutely. Product. And why are they going to keep looking, looking, looking? Because they're in power. If mm -hmm. they were up in stress, would they keep looking? No, they yeah. do something. They'd be grabbing hold of the first life ring they stumbled across. If they're up here where obstacles are, so power, stress, or whatever, they're going to make a good decision, the right decision, and sooner rather than later. Daniel, you've just un unmuted. What would you like to add? Sure. I, I was just looking at it and, and wondering uh, uh, two things, Steve. One is, uh, is it advisable along the stream to to, uh, to make checkpoints of, of, if we could solve this today, would it be time? You know that that type of thing, so that when you get to the when you get to the close, right, and actually it's the open, the open of doing business together. Yeah. Um, that uh, that they've already said three times at least. Yes, right. Now is the time to get started. Right. The important thing for us in uh, if we're going to be really strict with the mastering protocol is that if we can pull those words out of their mouth instead of exactly. us putting that exactly. in the question, we're going to end up with a better thing. So um, so uh, rather than asking them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we could solve your problem today, blah, 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 the, you know, the conditional kind of statement, I just want them to commit that. Do you think this would solve your problem? Do you think this would solve your problem today? Do you think this would get you back on the right track today? So instead of them kind of um, uh, responding to the trial close, I'm instead keeping them in their own head. Um, mm -hmm. on that. So that's the only difference. It's a subtle difference, no mistake about it. Trial closes and tie down closes work very effectively for decades. 
And so the fact that they are uh, a, um, a valid tension management tool um, is, uh, is indisputable. The question is, can we refine the questions in such a way that the conversation remains in the, in the client's head instead of, um, you know, now it's a conversation with us as an external um, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, but yeah, Dan, you're absolutely right. And we have a little bit of an enhancement we might be able to throw in. Now, uh, Keith, in good. this case, I think the guy had past experience, you know, where he threw money at, you know, reports, analysis. And, and so it's like, no, I'm out. I mean, he was immediate in his shutdown. Yeah. What do you, what, but well, I, but think I about, think, you know, here, yeah. Here's the thing that we do again. This is very interesting. <laughs> this is ChangeWorks Practitioner Summit, and we're talking about tension flow. I love it. <laughs> so because the practitioner program, this this little section that, that spun off of, of uh, the merging of brilliance is really all about you guys honing your skills on our actual subject matter. And mm -hmm. so the master stream is absolutely part of our, I mean, it's where the whole, my whole career began. I started as a sales trainer. And if you can't hear it in my voice, I have a lot more passion about sales training uh, than I do about, you know, general tension management. Because <laughs> the mm -hmm. audience is fun. That, uh, uh, the bottom line truth is that there is no audience like an audience of salespeople. So uh, they, well, they are expressive. Yes, David. Tell them, tell them where you disclose price. Oh, you disclose price at the very end of your solutions presentation. So right up here. So because there's only three, we, we recognize tensions on its way down. We don't want tension to keep going down because they end up in power. So we want to do something at the conclusion of our presentation that we know will raise tension back. And the handiest thing to do, and the most logical thing as far as the progression of the conversation is going, is to tell them what it's going to cost. And so when you tell them what something's going to cost, and yeah, there are some very skillful ways to do it, but nevertheless, you're going to get one of three reactions. You're either going, and you guys tell me, what are the three reactions that you could have when someone tells you what the price is? Gee, that's too high. Gee, that's too low. Wow, it's just what I expected. Right, those are the three possibilities. I studied hard a long time ago. <laughs> there you go. It's higher, it's lower, or it's where I was at. So if it's Either higher, way, you just got to keep them up, keep them <laughs> exactly. It's going to keep their level of tension high because if it's what they expected, they're going to be very pleased uh, with that, you know, because they went into it thinking like, this is my budget or this is what I'm anticipating. So great. It is what it is. Maybe it leaves them flat as far as tension goes, but it doesn't lower their tension. Um, or they're going to find out it's less than they thought it was going to be, uh, in which case you need to reexamine your pricing <coughs> structure. But nevertheless, um, they're going to be excited. Because it's out, you know, now it's a deal, and so even better. Uh, or they're going; it's going to be higher than they was it were anticipating. In which case, it might feel like it's an obstacle that's coming your way, an objection that's coming your way. We handle them all three situations. The protocol does not change based on their response. The protocol is now we're going to say, let's review your situation. This is where you're starting from. This is where you wanted to go. This is what's in your way. Uh, these were the solutions we offered, and with that in place, do you think that you know what? What do you think would happen? So we want them to buy it, and we're doing this all by asking questions. By the way, I know I'm babbling a little bit, but it's just conjuring up all kinds of little tidbits of uh, understanding to share with you guys. Recognize the tension goes up when the prospect is talking. See, phase two is all about asking questions; their tension goes up. Phase four is all about asking them questions. Yes, it's a review of the questions we ask them in phase two, but this is a review of the questions. When I ask them questions, their tension goes up. Tension goes down when the prospect is listening. And so during my presentation, just the sheer volume of uh, information the presentation may uh, may. Um, uh, contain or uh, or uh, maybe this the, the yeah usually it's volume it's usually people's tension goes down because it's too much the presentation wasn't tight and focused enough so but this is about when they listen their tension goes down okay so um, I say all that just to David's point we disclose the price between the uh, at the end of our presentation and at the beginning of our closing summary our committing phase. Now, if somebody like he just 
shut down. It's like, no, yep. and, I, and you could tell it was almost like I've been there, done that. I'm not spending another dime on things like this. What yep. would you have done at that point, Keith? Well, the first thing that I'd like to uh, illustrate with what you've shared is what's happening to the tension flow. Their tension flow is not mapping to the master stream. So we can mm -hmm. always do a tension analysis. So Edie, one thing I would encourage you to do, and everyone for that matter, the next time you're in kind of a situation like that, attending a meeting or whatever, and you think someone's trying to um, uh, influence somebody else, you just grab out a pen and a piece of paper and you become an EKG machine. And you just start kind of letting your hand feel the tension that that prospect is feeling. And then after all is said and done, you would be able to look at that tension curve and say, well, of course that didn't reach an agreement. Of course that went off track because of here, here, and here. And so I would say that these are some of the possibilities that might've caused the problem that uh, this guy is in now. Perhaps they are already so familiar with one another that there is no relationship tension. So phase one, this connecting phase is like they're just an, you know, an old buddy. So there's there's no tension there. And so we just throw something out, a little question. We don't do a thorough phase two and asking about situations or whatever. So for some reason, this guy just started talking about his solution, right? Is that yeah, how you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are buddies from years back. Right. Yeah. And so now I'm presenting, you know, my my most valuable stuff to someone who's down in power apathy and apathy. And uh, by the way, that presentation is going to make tension go down, even under the best case scenario. If this guy wasn't really doing a well thought out presentation, really conveying, you know, simply uh, what, what needs to be done, the tension is going to go even further down. And mm -hmm. if you close when tension's low, you will hear the answer. What, everybody? No. No. Yep. And it's got nothing to do with his situation because his situation was never really explored. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do with someone not paying attention to tension and as a result, watching that uh, um, impact. Uh, well, look, he could have given the perfect closing summary, but if I give the perfect closing summary to someone who's down in apathy to begin with, and it goes mm -hmm. up by that same margin, I'm still in apathy. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why objection handling is probably the longer the presentation, the longer the closing is going to take. The secret to a quick sale is a short presentation. So, and by the way, forget, take this out of sales for a second. I, I, we always talk about sales because that's in our industry, uh, the niche that offers the greatest uh, opportunities for us, but this is just influencing skills. Right. So, exactly. All oh, it's just you know, T, T, the greatest trouble I've had as I'll call myself a senior consultant yep. is to forget when I'm consulting and when I'm selling. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, consulting. Wait, say that again. Say your last thing again. Mm -hmm. I was taking notes. Yeah, what did you say? Uh, I, I said that the, the worst thing that's happened to me as a senior consultant is yeah. to forget that there are times that I'm supposed to be selling, not consulting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And for, yeah, exactly. You can't. And, yes. And the real thing is that all of us in human development or whatever, we're always selling it. But again, I, I, because of, I know who will ultimately be listening to the recording of this call. I want them to know this is also something that plays out in daily life. So mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. same thing, same dynamic. And here's the real issue. If you want to really understand why, why it's easy to influence a total, it's easier to influence a total stranger than it is to influence a close friend. Why mm -hmm. is that? But because of this level of, of comfort reduces mm -hmm. the, um, the level of productive tension. So it's too familial, right? Mm -hmm. So familiarity interferes with a great many things in life we're trying to accomplish. For example, familiarity mm -hmm. interferes with coaching, with consulting, with therapy, with any of these, uh, of these um, more um, consultative sort of skills we use. Mm -hmm. Familiarity can interfere with that. So mm -hmm. familiarity interferes with leadership. It interferes with management. These executive leaders who say, I'm going to lead by getting to know all of my people. Well, you're creating a social service agency then inside of your, inside of your business. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So, so T, what's your take on this now in terms of where we are in today's time with this overwhelm of information? So, you know, people like even something simple as buying a car, right? Yeah. They already do the research online before they even speak with anyone. So they have, have, kind of have in mind what will yeah. solve, I guess, an issue for them somewhat. Well, but yeah, you still have think, to sell, though. Well, do you? Here's the thing, and we have a, a one, our, our niece works at a very large car dealership, and she's actually the finance person. And one of the things that we learned from her is that the dealership does not really make much money to speak of off of the sale of a car itself. No, they do it off the maintenance. They, it's not only the maintenance. It's also about all the add-ons. Do you want right. an ended warranty? Do you right. want to have it coded with a special coding? Do you right. want things like um, floor mats or whatever the, the case packages is? and all that stuff? Exactly. The same thing in healthcare. Like when you go to the emergency department, that's considered a package. Yep. And so yeah. that cost for emergency ICU, those things are almost right. 10 times as higher. That's right. Because they have, <laughs> yeah. And so this is the whole goal is to sell those things because, <laughs> pardon me, the car itself is becoming increasingly transactional. Right. Right. That people do know what they want. They do know what it's going to cost. Um, right. It's probably been advertised on the dealership's own website. I can look for that exact same car coast to coast in a matter of minutes online. And so they get it. They get it completely. Most people walk in knowing what car they want and why they want it. Now, that doesn't stop me, the sales representative, from saying, well, you've looked, obviously, at the basic model. Here's the, the sports edition or here's the, the luxury edition. You might as well take a look at these while you're here as well. So I have an opportunity to upsell. But I think the sale itself more often or more and more uh, so with technology being the way it is, is kind of already, you know, kind of that's not where the sales skills are really required. Right. Because people are already looking like even for coaching or consulting, right? They'll yeah. compare based on their experience on a website or they might have been on these so-called master classes, which are, you know, um, code for sale. Because you're yeah. going to get 13 minutes of information <laughs> and then pitch another 40 minutes or so. Yeah. So yeah. they've been on all of these. I was just thinking about that, like what Edie was describing. Because that kind of stuff is kind of like, I ask the people automatically whenever I get something in, in like uh, an investor about Ozempic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I say, <laughs> is, this, is this like going to be a true information session or is this a sales call? Yeah, like I have some straight up because I'm like, don't waste my time to have me come to your master's class and then you're going to pitch. I'm not interested in no, that. Right, 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 right. And so the thing is that any marketing method, any marketing approach, um, sooner or later, the buying public, it's wise to it or at least a portion of the buying public is wise to it, and it loses its effectiveness. All of us are at the age where we have been actively pursued by financial advisors, financial planners who want to take us out for a fancy dinner, and they're going, and we know what it is. It's going to be like, yeah, it'll be a nice dinner, but it's going to be a sales pitch about their, their services. Why we still get those things, I don't know. I have to imagine that their effectiveness has diminished, not because because of the um, uh, the act itself, but because they didn't do good tension management. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we talked about with our financial services uh, corporate clients is that you shouldn't ever do it as a single standalone seminar. You should do it as a workshop and uh -huh. really do real work with people. There, there, there's like three sessions. You're going to do this, then we're going to do this. And yeah, it's all free and treat it as a real learning opportunity. And over the course of that learning opportunity, they're going to become more comfortable with you. You're going to become more familiar with them. And there's going to be exercises you can build into your program that are going to help them to see where their problems are and why they need someone like you. So I don't think that it's so much the method itself is a failure as much as its tension management inside of that method was not done properly. Yeah, that's good. I definitely yeah. know they're not doing that. They're rushing into it. In fact, you'll hear marketers use 
Robert Tildani's like um, I think it's called uh, persuasion something techniques and he teaches like he didn't tell them to go out and create scarcity. He's talking about the psychological aspect right. of scarcity, but then they'll use timers and you talk about a digital product that's limited, but it's digital. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, obviously it's still tension management. So mm -hmm. even in what he's looking for and recommending, I can hear the tension management elements that are inside of it. So I would not be at all surprised to find out that it's at least somewhat effective if applied properly, you know what I mean? Um, right. For me, the whole message here is that tension management is what it's all about. The strategic framework um, is just a way for someone to look at a particular technique they might be uh, employing and go, what effect does that technique have on someone's level of productive tension? And based on that answer, where does it belong in the overall process? So far, far more often than not, when we were getting our new uh, sales clients, we would start off by doing a thorough tension analysis of their current way of selling. And we could then show them, here's the ideal flow of tension. Here's what your people are doing. And if there was any kind of hesitation to believe us, we would say, we're going to teach you in 10 minutes how to do a tension track. And then we're going to uh, let you watch a video of one of your salespeople delivering what you have sanctioned as the official sales approach in your company. And you guys can imagine what the results show. <laughs> Just like uh, Daniel has hand up. Daniel, feel free to chime in. Uh, and thanks, Dee. I, I was just curious, uh, just listening to all of this and wondering, you know, in each phase, you're, you're really kind of uh, playing a different role. Is that correct? Yeah, you are playing a very different role, or at least you're emphasizing a different part of you during each one of it as the sales representative, because I also think that the prospect or the, the object, I don't want to say target, but you know, the individual <laughs> you're trying to influence is also moving through different uh, uh, phases as well. So I could describe this connecting phase in uh, physical, tonal, and verbal uh, sorts of terms. Uh, talk about the energy that one's projecting here, because obviously this is the connecting phase. We should start off being very warm, very inviting, very whatever word helps that person to feel safer, more embraced um, uh, than you know they might otherwise have felt. Well, then when I get into phase two, which is the analyzing phase, this is where I need to let my expertise show. And I'm a very big believer that people really um, begin to see your expertise long before you say anything, long before you give advice. The, the questions you ask, the quality of those questions, the order of those questions um, are having an impact on that person's not only perception of their own situation, but perception of you. And so this is all a questioning skill. And so I would hope that the person is going to have that vibe of being the, so the scientist. I'm the clinician. I'm the one who's looking through things. We're following a process here. So Brian, I was going to say, pay attention to this because it's a, what a good doctor's uh, intervention or, or um, meeting mm -hmm. should sound like during a you know regular office visit. Let's be a little bit comfy. And by the way, I'll tell you, the one thing that doctor's offices do routinely that raises tension when it, they should be working at lowering it is they go, welcome to our office, step in, now get on the scale. <laughs> what kind of, why are you asking me this? I mean, how hey, 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 T, speaking of which, talk about the different two, two different types of tension. Oh, yeah. So um, this is something that goes back to the merging of brilliance, uh, where we were talking about different people who have proposed different aspects of different models over time. And one of those models, uh, very quickly, a very small diagram, and only talked about in maybe two sentences flat, was this thought that, that uh, during an influencing uh, situation, there are two types of tension someone's going to experience. Those are relationship tension and task tension. So relationship tension is the tension that you feel about the person who's trying to influence you and in turn they feel about you. So we got to make sure everyone's comfortable with one another. We don't want any relationship tension. 
Once the relationship tension has been sufficiently lowered, we would like to keep relationship tension low for the duration of the interaction. And from that point forward, all the tension we want to focus on is task tension. Task tension is the tension that a person is experiencing about the situation that they are in. And that is what we're actually managing is that, uh, is that task tension. The degree to which we are successful at, establish, at eliminating really relationship tension is what gives us the permission or the range of, um, what do we say, how hard we can question, how hard we can, how direct we can be. We can be more direct if that relationship tension was lowered. So people often say, well, why are there two curves then? Because phase one is all about relationship tension. By the way, phase five is for the most part about eliminating any residual relationship tension that might be there. Why don't we show two tension lines? It's because and Brian can certainly uh, give evidence to this, a human body can't experience two different levels of tension about two different subjects simultaneously. Okay, your Absolutely. body, is, it's experiencing one, uh, <laughs> one level of tension and it's being expressed in all of your vital signs. Uh, I'm sure all of your neurochemicals and probably gave rise to those changes in vital signs. It doesn't know the subject matter. Your body is just feeling what it's feeling. Now, if you get it to pause for a moment and start asking it questions to share what the thoughts and images and uh, things are that are going on in their head, they may very well be able to provide you with context that would demonstrate that it's a relationship tension issue versus a task tension issue. But you as the prospect or the, the, uh, the individual, um, you don't make these discernments. Well, it's going, your body is experiencing a certain level of tension. And that's why we show it the way we show it. So yeah, the subject changes, but the tension is still the tension. And, and uh, that's that pretty powerful. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, I heard three people. So Edie, you want to go first and then Brian? Yeah, to keep the, the relationship tension low, you're talking about the first phase rapport, connecting all of that, right? Right, and then making sure that throughout the rest of the conversation, nothing happens that raises someone's level of productive tension. Let me give you an example of this. So I am uh, searching for a doctor again, you know, changing my doctor. Now, I like my doctor a lot. I think my doctor is absolutely brilliant. I think he's exactly the kind of doctor that I'm looking for. And so we have great rapport. We're, we're more chums. I don't even need to call him doc or anything like that. It's all very familiar. And I was very, very comfortable. Everything was all very, very good. We were focusing on, you know, uh, my diet issues and all that because I'm on the ketogenic diet. And so blah, 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 and how that affects blood work. And then he's, uh, he's sitting in his chair and his, uh, the, his lab coat just kind of drops a little bit. And I see that strapped to the exterior of his thigh is a gun. And I'm kind of going like, yeah. And so I'm kind of going like, well, now, you know, I get it. I'm in Arizona. I'm in the West. People have the have all the legal rights necessary to carry that. But when you've got it strapped to your leg in your office at work, you make me wonder what could happen while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has come? What's happened here that makes you feel like wearing that gun is somehow necessary, yeah. appropriate? whatever the case may be. And so isn't it interesting that because of a relationship tension issue, um, the fact that he's an expert at the task tension uh, aspects of my, uh, my, you know, my, my, my reasons for going to him, um, they take the back seat. They take the back seat. I mean, you know, can you imagine what if I had one strapped to my leg and we're there sitting next to each other? What are we doing? I don't get it. Good so, example, T. Yeah. Wow. All right. So anyway, um, mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Daniel, uh, oh, wait, yeah. Brian, you were going to say something and then back to Daniel. No, I was just going to say how powerful that is, uh, that what, what you described from a tension management perspective, because think about the client, like the body metabolizes things mm -hmm. that are so-called traumatic to us. Yeah. So, you know, they've been dealing with an issue for a long time that has been resolved. 
and you just ask the wrong questions or ask questions that are not tension based, you're not getting at the surface of what they're really trying you to are solve. Not. You're not. And people pay attention to where their tension is. Pain grabs your tension, you know, feeling a way that you don't want to feel. That's where your tension is. Talk to me about that. Ask me questions about that. I'm going to give you another example. I know we're at the top of the hour, but I want to give you another example from phase three, this idea. Now we get into the presentation. So let's stick with kind of a medical office visit. Can you imagine is that there I am, I arrive, my back really hurts and blah, blah, blah. And you're saying like, well, you could probably benefit from some adjustments. So let's talk a little bit about some uh, osteopathic sort of treatments we could be doing, whatever the case may be. In fact, and I'm sure those of you who have gone to chiropractors back, take it back maybe 20 years or so where they were trying to really build their practices, they would make you watch these videos. Did anybody have to watch the videos where there was like I, yeah. um, video mm -hmm. after yeah. video after video um, of uh, whatever chiropractic medicine is all about, whatever. My back was screaming. Do I want to watch a video? <laughs> no. No, mm -hmm. and so two things are happening. My task tension is actually going down because they're boring me. Uh, if they had just said, here's what's about to happen, and the video was 60 seconds long, give me a TikTok <laughs> uh, version <laughs> of it, that's one thing. But if you're going to make me watch stuff that doesn't feel like it applies to me and on and on and on. And by the way, because I'm still in pain and this isn't helping me with my pain, what do you think is happening to the relationship tension? Going up. It's going mm -hmm. up because do I like you? Because mm -hmm. you made me Not watch yet. videos. You know? Not right now. No. No. Now, if you'd given me the adjustment so my back felt fine and then said you might want to watch these videos to learn why that works uh, so effectively, why we do what we do the way we do it, then here's some video. Thanks. Because at the end of things, I'm trying to get tension to go down. Give me more information. All that stuff you don't tell me during your quick presentation, you feel free to tell me during phase five. So, and that's where sequence is so important. I, you know what I absolutely mean? Absolutely vital. It's absolutely the sequence vital. of when you do this stuff. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, we're at the top of the hour. So, uh, obviously, this was a wonderful topic. I'm glad you brought it up. No one dropped off the call. So, I, I, I'm glad you guys found value in the, in the discussion. So, um, anytime you have a question like this, if you want to send it to me in advance, I'll get a bit more prepared uh, for, you know, doing the, the content delivery. But, uh, but yeah, I thought this was pretty good. Obviously, oh, okay. there's a lot to know about Master Stream. And I really do believe that anyone who is in any kind of an influencing skills situation, that could be as a parent, as a, in a relationship, just with friends, mm -hmm. a volunteer organization, I don't care. If someone's mm -hmm. trying to influence someone to do something, tension management is afoot. And, yeah. um, and you need to get really good at monitoring it and managing it. And this is what I'd say to the clients, it's completely logical. All you have to do is learn the process. We have a protocol, step by step, do this in this order, uh, and the tension will take care of itself. Uh, people would be selling a lot more than they're selling, and that means helping a lot more people than they're currently helping. Um, I would again, like to explore, if we can, T, I don't know if anyone else would be interested in it, but like the master strain from like a personal brand perspective, because there's a lot of gurus as such online and what they often wow. sell is, you know, I had success doing X, Y, and Z. And so here's my exact steps that you could follow. Absolutely. And you'll get the same thing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And, you know, and I've often thought about focusing my ongoing work back on sales because that's where I started. And I know that sales representatives uh, do have a tendency to invest in their, mm -hmm. their skills because they know that uh, just a little bit of an edge can make a real difference uh, in whatever the outcome happens to be. Uh, but the truth is that master stream as a sales technique um, assumes that you are face to face with a client or you know on the phone. I mean, somewhere or another, there's a direct interaction going on. Mm -hmm. And so much of what's being sold today is being sold without the involvement of another human being. Right. 
Uh, now, mm -hmm. I could take the strategic framework and say, as I will at some point, if you guys want to continue talking about uh, how this applies as practitioners, um, I could say this is also the ideal flow of tension you should create whenever you are writing a letter to someone. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're creating an article, if you are putting together a good screenplay, mm -hmm. I promise you every effective screenplay mm -hmm. is effective because it does a great job at tension management. And so we can actually monitor, manage, plot, uh, you know, refine that flow over and over and over again. So I could, and, and as a speaker, the storytelling, the same thing, T. Mm -hmm. Yep. A good story. It's got to map. It's got to be good tension management. And it can't just be a, here's the situation, here's the story, now we're done. I got to play with that flow of tension. Yeah. Um, people think that attention spans are getting shorter. That may be true, but it is simultaneously simultaneously true that blockbuster movies are getting longer mm -hmm. now, reconciled yes. with it, no intermissions right the exactly. movies are doing such a skilled job of tension management that <laughs> you might look at the little uh, you know the listing for movies whatever it goes like oh it's three hours long but you start watching it and that three hours vanishes awful fast because mm -hmm. you know, it's well done <laughs> It's yep. well. okay. Wait, we can always talk more about that, but yes, uh, this is something that I have a great deal uh, of information and insight I can share you guys on. In fact, at one point during the Building a Career That Matters series that we've done over the years, and those videos uh, are up on uh, our YouTube channel, and more and more than we're getting uploaded, it's well over 100 hours of, of advice on how to build. A stronger practice like this, I think a good 20 hours of it is all about master stream. So, um, so you guys, it's actually, brilliant, T. It is it, absolutely it, 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 light years ahead of yeah. any other sales message. I just have become a snob when I hear anybody <laughs> talking about their sales method, and it's like, you are so stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm serious. It's like, Edie, Edie. Edie, huh. wasn't I smart to get certified back in 1991? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. That's right. Wow. Yeah. David, is, <laughs> David has been certified as long as we've been married. Wow. Okay. So. Uh, you know. Well, we followed you, David. We followed you. Exactly. Yes. So there is you a made big a good market. choice. Yeah, there is a big uh, market. How, uh, can I share this with this group? Because they were just like, God, what did we do wrong? And I was going to kind of talk about it. You just did a marvelous job. Can I share a link of this with that group? Uh, I don't see why not. Um, okay. And so, how soon will it be up? Well, it gets edited today. And so usually it's up within 24 hours. Thank you so much, T. This was yeah. great. Great timing awesome. for me. Yeah. All righty. Well, we'll continue this then on our next call. Yeah. Thank everybody. you. Bye, everyone. Okay, take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.